Don't worry, it's just drywall. That's right, this is the most common damage you're gonna see. Somebody opened a door and boom, the handle went right through the drywall. So the way we're gonna fix this is using what we call a California patch in the industry. I think down there they call it a Canadian patch, but we'll wait and see. First step is to get a drywall saw, okay? And what we wanna do in order to fix a round hole is first make it square. Now you wanna cut the hole bigger than the damage. Drywall tends to damage bigger on the back side than what you see in the front. So you wanna make sure you're restoring it back to the full thickness. Now let's get rid of all that damage. Here we go. Just a quick note, this is an exterior wall. And in Canada, we have four season climate and we've been using vapor barrier, plastic, on our exterior walls since about the mid 1970s. Now it's gotten a lot thicker over the years and our technology for sealing everything up has gotten better. But because we used a saw, now we're compromised. We really want to make sure that you protect the passing of warm air meeting a colder space inside the wall because that'll drive condensation, which will lead to ice buildup. And we don't want that. Step one is done. Now the insulation and vapor barrier are taken care of. Those are two main systems in the home. It's time to patch. Now you're gonna need a little piece of drywall. Uh, generally speaking, in a lot of building stores, you can get a two by two square, or you can even just go to the guy at the store and say, hey, do you have any broken pieces you can give me a good deal on? Because a homeowner only needs a small little piece. You don't need to go buy a big four by eight foot sheet of drywall to patch one hole. Now, we're gonna take this, and here's the secret. We're gonna put it up backwards, okay? And we're basically gonna take this knife and we're gonna cut just the paper the same place as the size of the hole and then a little bit thinner, okay? So just a little bit on the inside. We'll cut that line all the way through. And that's the piece I'm gonna keep. Now, this is where this gets fun. What we're gonna do is we're going to break on that joint. It's really that simple. Let me just show you one more time, okay? You put a hand on each side of the joint and you just break it. All you have to do is just get a little scratch in that paper. It's that easy, okay? From here, we're gonna then peel by put, using our fingers. We're gonna push on the white paper and push against our thumb. We're gonna peel the drywall off of the paper, okay? All the way around. Now we've got a piece of drywall to fill the hole and we have the paper that we're gonna to use to patch the wall with. Now, in this particular case, the drywall is extremely large, so if you don't mind, I'm just gonna trim it back to something a little bit more manageable because we don't need a lot of paper. Here we go. Less is better. Whenever you're doing work with drywall, less is more, okay? Now we gotta do is mix our mud. Now the product I like to recommend is right here, Sheetrock 20. What 20 stands for is this particular drywall compound, you have to add water and mix yourself. It's kind of like baking. And then 20 minutes is how long you have to work with the mud before it starts to get too stiff. It's hard to work with. But this process here only takes about five minutes. So, so this is perfect. It also means that it should be able to dry in about an hour if you just put a little fan on it and you can get a second or a third coat if necessary. Now this little tool here is called a hawk and it's available in the drywall department. And the purpose of this is, one, you put your mud on it to work from, but it's also a great mixing tool. Now remember, we're just doing a little patch, so we don't need a whole lot of compound. That ought to be enough to do the job right there. Next thing you do is grab a four inch drywall knife. What you do is you stick the handle in the middle, you create a little volcano. Okay, here we are. We're gonna add a little bit of water right inside the middle. Something that's easy to manage. Don't fill it all the way to the top. Okay, now this particular compound, it's not gonna soak up the water right away. It's gonna need a little bit of love. So, a little bit of a vibration to encourage the water to work its way through the mud. Okay, and then what we do, take a little bit off the edge and you sprinkle it on like icing sugar. Okay, I use too much water. Now, if you want to, I would recommend doing this over a kitchen sink. If you put in too much water, just sprinkle a little bit more compound on until it becomes the consistency that you want. Boom. There we go. That's a little bit more like it. Thick and toothpaste, okay? Now how are we gonna apply it? Just take a little bit and you wanna run it inside the gap. Okay? Right there. 
That's how we start. We want to build up the extra. Remember how we had a little bit of a jiggle? And we're going to try to get it on the top, but in most cases, it's not going to work. And now we're going to spread a thin layer all around the hole. Okay. And now we take our patch and we're going to set it right in the middle. Be careful when you put it in. You're going to, this is where the corner of the drywall is. You're going to set the depth using your knife on an angle. So you're making contact on both sides of the drywall and the drywall on the surface in the middle. And that'll set your depth. If you push too hard, you'll have a huge dent and you'll have to fill that whole hole. Now, with gentle pressure, we're going to just run the corners out into the compound. All right. And now we have it in position. Now we're going to put a little bit of pressure. Oh. Okay. A little bit of pressure. Get rid of all the extra mud. Because less is more. And with the extra compound that you have, you want to put just a little bit around the edge. Okay. Just a little bit to get rid of the ridge. Okay. Not too much here. Remember, you're trying to avoid adding too much moisture to the paper because moisture will make the paper wrinkle. Okay? Don't worry about perfection. When that's dry, we're going to pull out a sanding block, give it a little scuff, and add another coat. Now, if you don't want to be making your own mud and you don't mind taking a little more time, you can buy a premixed drywall compound. Okay? All purpose drywall compound. And when it comes right out of the box or the bucket or whatever you're getting it in, it's usually a little too thick to be applied. So same thing, whip up a small volcano and throw just an ounce of water in there. And we'll just draw some lines, try to mix it up a little bit. And this will thin it out. More creamy, a little bit smoother. It goes on a little bit thinner. You don't have to spend so much time sanding it all back because if your mud isn't thin enough, it'll go on really thick, no matter what tool you use. Now, we started with the four inch knife, but you don't want to use this to finish. And what we're going to want to do is just take a little bit under the trowel. You want to start and just apply it on the wall. Don't worry about how it looks. Cover everything up. Okay. And now what we can do is we can come back with a little bit of pressure and remove the excess. I did one through the middle. Now I'm going to do clean up each side. In order to do the side, I want to put the pressure on the outside corner like this. So I'm not taking all the mud off the inside. And the same over here, pressure on the outside corner. Okay. Now your patch is almost perfect. The only thing you have to do now is wait for this one to dry. Grab yourself one of these sanding sponges, okay? When it's totally dry, just give it a light sand and add one more coat of the same drywall compound. Sand again. Always prime new drywall mud before you try to paint. And remember, the reason that this happened is because a door went flying through the wall. That means you also need to go and buy one of these, a brand new doorstop. And when you pick this up in the package, don't be worried about it. The screw is inside. Cheers.